Today I'm going to review how to configure a basic project in Logic Designer. First we'll go ahead and kick off Logic Designer. And I've already got a, when you tick off Logic Designer, it automatically comes up with the last project that uh, you had open. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this project. And then we'll start a new one. When you start a new project, you can pick from a series of predefined templates. And in fact, you can create your own templates, but we'll save that for another session. For this case, we'll go ahead and start off with a Stardom FCX project. And this is the template you can use for every kind of project that you have. And it'll start you out with some basic libraries already pre-configured in, into the uh, Logic Designer. All right, once the project comes up, you can go ahead and take a look at the libraries that are in your project. So you can see you have this bit utility and several other FCX libraries um, already defined within the project. These little yellow or gold key Libraries are firmware libraries, and then the blue book libraries are called user libraries. It's just a little different icon symbolization for each of those. So the next step um, to do is go ahead and make sure that you've configured um, the, your handy little toolbars. So you can see with my project, I've already got these toolbars right here across the top. And how we do that is go ahead and click on Extras and Options. So if I unclick them, you can see that they disappear. And so you always get the menu bar and I like to go ahead and also have the file so that now I can save my project or save my file. I can go undo and redo. You can uh, zoom in, zoom out and a couple other little handy handy tools here. I also like to bring up my compile debug um, toolbar. I like to have my function block diagram toolbar, but I'll remove that this time. We're not using it. You can choose which one you like. If you like sequence programming or ladder logic, then you might want to, so this is a ladder logic programming toolbar, then you might want to pick one of those. I like to have my logic analyzer toolbar up, and I also would like to have my function block instances. This lets me look for the previous or next function block within my project. For this example though, we'll probably just want to use the file and the compile debug, so I'll un uncheck all the others. And once you figure out the flavor you like, then you can keep those uh, toolbars checked and use them for every project that you create. Now another little handy thing to use will be the automatic backup capability. And you can select the backup tab and then something that I recommend setting is, is the before compilation. And every time you go to compile, it'll go ahead and create a backup for you. You might want to just do it on project close. When you close the project, it'll automatically save a backup. Um, you can also do it periodically, but before compilation is probably a good one. You can also set the auto save. This one I recommend to use. And for me, I like to set it at 20 minutes. Uh, if you're starting out, maybe you do once an hour. If you're super fast and you're really clocking along, maybe you do every five minutes so you don't lose too much data. For my uh, rate of programming, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes seems good enough for me. Uh, again, if you're just starting out and you're going through the learning curve and you're picking up the help files or reading a book going along, maybe you set that to once an hour or 60 minutes. So let's apply those changes and say OK. So the next thing to do is to go ahead and make sure the basic project is set up. So part of that will be to go ahead and look at your physical hardware and determine if you're connected to an FCN, FCJ, or an FCN RTU. If you click on the configuration here, this is IPC40. If you click here and click on properties and then click on PLC processor, you'll see you can choose from a list of processor types. And basically what you want to do is choose IPC40 if you have an SCJ or FCN. The IPC33 and IPC32 version are older versions of that uh, processor. So if you have um, a new FCN FC, or FCJ then you're going to want the latest one IPC40. Or if you have an FCN RTU then you want to use the SH model. 
Okay, in this case, I have an FCN RTU, so I'm going to choose the SH04 underscore 40. So we'll apply that and then say OK. All right, and so this is just a little warning that pops up. It says, that, hey, because you've changed your PLC type, make sure that your uh, resources and settings are, are OK and correct them if necessary. So just say OK to that and say OK. We haven't set any of those other settings. We should be fine. The next thing you should do is go ahead and look at the FCX um, setting here and you want to make sure that you're going to use the correct processor for that as well. So we want to look at, select that, right click on it and then select the PLC processor and now you're going to select the proper processor. The FCJ and FCN uses a different processor than the uh, FCN RTU but in this case it doesn't matter. Um, you can use FCX or FCX underscore A. This um, PLC setting really is um, just setting a size, memory size, of how many objects you can create or um, tag names, POU names that you can create with the controller. So if you're using a standard configuration, FCX is fine. If you're using Foundation Field Bus or one of the other buses, you should probably use FCX underscore A. So I th also recommend that if you're going to use Modbus, then use FCX underscore A. So now if you want a little help on what I just did here on correcting the, sorry, selecting the correct processor and this correct PLC type, then what you would do, you could find this information in the help. So where's the help within this logic designer environment? The help in the logic designer environment is under this question mark at the end of your file toolbar here. So cl click on the question mark and you'll see a set of book sets here that is all the help for your different libraries as well as standard help within the FCN FCJ environment. And now you've got a basic project uh, set up. So thanks for joining me and look for other sessions where we'll cover adding to the libraries and setting up an application such as Modbus Communications and PID Loops.